Welcome to episode zero of the Geeky Nomads. Hello. I'm Dustin. I'm Lauren. And uh, yeah, we are starting this off. Uh, we're not actually going to be talking about any sci-fis in particular this episode. Uh, we just want to give you kind of an intro to us and the show. Yeah. Um, our relationship is basically uh, based around uh, science fiction. To, to a right? certain extent, yeah. Well... It was, let's just say we've been watching Star Trek the whole time we, that we've been together. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, two, three months in, I started finding out how much of Star Trek Lauren hadn't seen. Like, she hadn't seen anything with the Borg. Oh, but I had seen all of the originals. <sighs> so, um, we Kirk. started, kind of uh, started off with me just going through and showing her Borg episodes so that she could get up on that. And then, finally, like, no, let's just go ahead and go through all of Star Trek. By star date. By star date. So that means that's right. We had to start with Star Trek Enterprise. Mm-hmm. Scott Bakula, uh, so dreamy. I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it, I I liked it too. Both when it was uh, first airing and when I've rewatched it twice now. Yeah. So yeah, start and we've well we've been married for a year and we're still going through star trek voyager so yep. i mean we're it's still trucking along we're gonna have to find something else to replace it though here pretty soon so we, we're on voyager season six now and after that because now we did break with the the proper uh order a little bit because voyager and uh deep space nine aren't even in the same quadrant of the galaxy. Yeah. So there isn't any overlap, or at least very, very right. little. So, and Stardate didn't matter there, so we're just watching Voyager but, as Voyager so we, goes. We still have the uh, final Star Trek, uh, the Next Generation movie. Uh, need to get through that after Voyager, because it actually does tie in with at least one character from Voyager showing up. And then we have uh, the reboot, since that's based on events... That started with somebody traveling back in time from later. And alternate universe! A time travel caused alternate universe, and we do are treating time travel episodes as being based on the star date from which they traveled from. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. This has been very, very geeky. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a total nerd. Uh I think I out-nerd you. Yes, yes. Just for a quick definition here, geek, by the way, is uh, a person who loves fandoms in general, correct? And then the nerd is a person who's got some skills, serious skills. Uh, Dustin is more of a nerd. He can run many Linux things. I'm running two systems right now. So he's got, he's a Linux nerd. Um, I am more of a geek, where I've got a whole shelving unit full of Deadpool action figures because I liked Deadpool before it was cool. Um, but I am also really into science as a fandom almost. So you have to check out science to myself. I'll start getting that started, and um, that'll talk more about science as a fandom versus uh, uh, actual geekiness. Yeah. But anyway. Um, so that's that's not necessarily related to what we are doing right now. Uh, we we do have another podcast, uh, Atheist Nomads. Uh, Lauren comes onto that sometimes, and I am always there to talk about science. Uh, we that's where we go into politics, religion, and all that stuff that we won't be covering here News, unless you know, it is boring stuff, current things. events, uh, actual things happening, and then of course some fictions. Uh, so if you are religious and you're one and you like sci-fi. You are welcome to be listening to our show. Uh, we right. won't be bringing up religion unless it is a specific situation, a specific show where that comes up. Like the Star Trek episodes that talk about higher beings? Yeah. Uh, but we aren't actually going to be covering Star Trek. Right. Specifically. We're not going to be covering Star Trek as a whole because it's too big and mm -hmm. we're way too into it. Yeah. We won't be covering Star Wars. No Star Wars. It's not sci-fi. We have, yes. It is a fantasy fiction. Yep. Because the force is magic and there's no way around it. You can't. Well, and the biggest problem with it being science fiction is it takes place a long, long time ago. 
Now, you can have a science fiction of a different galaxy or alien civilization that involves a lot of science. This one didn't. Yeah, yeah. There's some jets and stuff, but... But it's mostly magic. It's mostly magic. Yeah. <laughs> so it, I, I compare it a lot more to Lord of the Rings than I do, say, Star Trek. Yes. Uh, I like Lord of the Rings, and I like Star Wars, but I don't consider either one to be science fiction. Yes, that and it's currently ongoing. The the reboot slash uh, prequels. Um, there, it's going to be the next one is going to be in theater. Rogue One will be in theater soon, so we're it's it's ongoing mm-hmm. and we can't cover it. Well, now we are as a whole going to be not covering something that is current. So, like if a, a movie comes out, and if we end up having the money to actually see some of these in theater. Uh, which would be very nice. Uh, <laughs> Patreon will Patreon. be coming. Uh, we won't talk about it until after it's been out on DVD for at least a month. Yeah, there's no point in talking about stuff that only a f- few of you have even seen. And spoilers. Nobody wants spoilers. Nobody wants... Sp- I don't want spoilers. Uh, but Of course, we're totally going to spoil the crap out of anything that's been out for more than that. Oh, so. yeah. yeah. You've, you've got a month after it's been released on DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, we also are going to be... If it is highly suspected or guaranteed that there will be a, a sequel, we will wait until after the sequel is out before we cover it because we want these episodes to be timeless. Right. The one exception we can make to that is when it's a reboot or a vastly different take on it. So, like Alien, we are going to be covering. Yes, Prometheus has a sequel that is in production. There might be an Alien 5. There might not, but you know, we don't know when it's going to come out. So we're just going to go ahead. As soon as it be twenty eighteen, that's two years out. And Prometheus is enough different that we will wait until after the sequel uh, before we talk about Prometheus. But we will be talking about Alien, Aliens, Alien Three, and Alien Resurrection the, here very soon. With a brief discussion on the Ridley Scott universe, whether or not there's such a thing and what fits and doesn't fit. Mm-hmm. In fact, that will probably be episode one or two. Uh, I think, I'm thinking two. We're tossing up between Alien uni- Alien, and uh, Terminator right now. Yeah. So We went through all of the Ridley Scott universe recently. Uh, Including a few Blade back. Runner. Yep, that is uh, officially in there. But we are uh, right now watching the Terminator series. And Which is awesome. There were only two movies in, so we've still got what three more movies and a TV show. Yes. You know, there's surprisingly a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger in sci fi. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, look forward to things like Firefly and Serenity, um, Battlestar Galactica, you know, the, all the kaiju monster films. We're talking classics. Okay, so Godzilla, um, the, the at- attack of the giant Gila monster, those things. We'll be covering that as a genre, not specific movies. Mm-hmm. I have been basically hooked to an IV to Mr. Science Theater 3000 on YouTube. <laughs> so I've seen a lot of these films. Bert, I, I know who Bert I. Gordon is. I know who Sandy Frank is. I don't expect Dustin to keep up with that. Because that's <laughs> insanity almost um, to be watching that in all of my spare time. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I love it so much. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that pretty much covers mm-hmm. you know what we're going to be covering. Well, and... One thing that to kind of expect is because of how much time is involved with one of these large universes, like, you know, the Terminator series, that is just to watch everything through once, that's pushing 20, 30 hours. Yeah, not including the comic books, the video games, um, the TV, sh- yeah, the TV shows, uh, so there's whole universes here. I'm going to be going more into the comic book genre stuff. Um, bringing but, up, well, well, I may even play some of the video games on an emulator. Mm. But with how big some of these are, what you can expect is big one and then a little like standalone. Yeah. So Firefly, one movie, one season. That's a lot less time. Um, so we could fit that in in between some really large ones. There's also some movies that are just a lot of fun, like Space Truckers. Space Truckers. He ha- he made me watch it. Yes, we will watch it again. And that's a more like that's like the kind of movie that Lauren would normally oh. want to watch, 
Not me, but I love space truckers. But it was it was it was actually pretty. It's, pretty it's fun. glorious. Um, we are also going to be asking for input and movie suggestions. So if there is something that I mean, the list that we have is actually pretty pretty big. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes up a whole document. But if there is something that you've seen that you want somebody to discuss, and uh, please let us know. I am open to suggestions as long as it fits within the science fiction genre as we've defined it. Um, magic is a tough one because there's a lot of alien technology that is basically magic, but depending on it, we'll go with it. Uh, we were even discussing yesterday, you know, if, what we were, we were talking about comic books and how science is often used mm-hmm. as uh, the explanation for what is basically magic, superpowers and stuff like that. Yeah. We might do an episode on that. Like That's all right. Radiation. If radiation. you get blasted with a lot of radiation, it will give you cancer or kill you. It will not give you superpowers. But in comic book universes, radiation is magic. It is just, it will make you do all sorts of things. If anything makes you powerful, it's probably because of radiation. But I, I would also say that that is more in the realm of Radio versus the Martians, where they do all things geek. Excellent podcast, by the way. Uh, whereas we are focusing solely on science fiction. Yes. And we may even do some crossovers with... Um, the creators of Radio vs. the Martians, simply because there is so much Arnold Schwarzenegger. There are other podcasts, uh, Podcast La Vista, yep. maybe? Podcast La Vista. Yeah, yeah. we're maybe, we're going to get get a hold of Mike Gillis for that one, too. Um, expect it to be a monthly show? Yes. Uh, we. I have a full-time job. Uh, Lauren currently has a part-time job. Woo! Uh, employment but we also have another podcast and with the amount of time that these movies um, can take to watch and research because uh, we aren't just going to be watching them and talking about them we need to look into production details and... i love production details that is basically what i'm doing when i watch a movie she has add i google it i google it on my phone with my thumbs that's why i'm making the thumb motion <laughs> if you can't see that it's that's my that's my sign language for google <laughs> Yeah. Lauren uh, has ADD, and looking at the, the production stuff helps with that. Yeah, it really, really does. Um, yeah, so we're going to put this up on Patreon, try to, you know... Probably make- around episode two or three will be going up on Patreon. Uh, we are going to hope to have the first full episode up in June. And for the feed, just for this podcast, uh, that will be going on... Uh, this episode, this this episode zero, will be going up um, probably like the week before or the day before the actual first episode. Uh, but yeah, we are looking at end of June. Might end up going into July. We do have a big trip coming up in June Woo! that might eat into the money. Woo! Will eat into the money. But it's a really good gauge of um, interest too. So we're hoping that this will be interesting and that everybody will mm-hmm. will will enjoy the uh learning about the universes um the individual movies productions uh how the fandoms are with each one so that is probably going to be a large chunk of the firefly episode is the fandom yes. um the fact that nathan fillion and cast are still so out there with it at the conventions it's awesome. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about mm-hmm. a whole plethora of things in regards to the science fiction, including some of the actual science. Yes, that will be a lot of fun. Because there are some science fiction that the science is basically magic, and then there are some science fiction where it's like, we have people like Neil deGrasse Tyson saying, yeah, okay, they basically had that on. <laughs> yeah, the, the the amount of gimmies that it requires it will be definitely be something we'll be having to talk about suspense of disbelief is an important factor of watching a good science fiction yes it is um it, it works when there are a few gimmies uh where it is a reasonable expectation of where technology might go in the future uh those always work out quite nicely they require very little suspension of disbelief but then you have the ones where uh okay using star trek as an example you have transporters and a Heisenberg compensator 
Seriously? Dilithium crystals. Um, yeah, it's stuff yeah. that was obviously like alien technology that was borrowed that helps explain the science and or sciences in, the, in quotation marks. Or in there. the case of transla- uh, of the, the not translators, the uh, transporters, they just did that to cut down on cost. Yes. They couldn't afford to have too many shuttlecraft scenes. So uh, anyway, that's that's kind of uh, getting a little bit too detailed for, for yeah, now. Yeah, that's, um, that's going to basically be uh, uh, the podcast. Yes. Uh, one thing that probably would be helpful uh, here to, to wrap up will just be a little bit of introduction of ourselves, specific, each of us individually, and our relationship with sci-fi. Uh, Ooh. Um, okay, well, I guess I'll start. Uh, like I said, I'm Lauren. Um, I have been into sci-fi since I was a wee little child, uh, watching the original Star Treks on K9, which is the local uh, rerun station. Mm. Uh, I re- got really into comic books, anime, oh my gosh, giant robot battles. If there's a science fiction genre that I really enjoy, it's it's giant robot battles. Um, so I've been into science fiction for, for my entire life. And uh, like I said, I really enjoy the production side of things. I love to know how many people it takes to actually run the queen alien puppet kind of thing. <laughs> um, it kind of drives Dustin crazy. But like he said, I have ADD and sitting through a movie especially thriller movies where there's a lot of suspense mm-hmm. can be a bit much for me. And it bothers me a lot less if she is on her phone digging into stuff about the movie that we're watching because then it's still <sighs> part, Facebook. It's still part of the shared cultural experience. Which is what this really is all about is um sharing that culture, that pop culture, subculture, cult culture <laughs> with with <laughs> Everybody, I want to hear what other people have to say about these movies too. So this is going to be a really fun exchange. Oh yeah, and for for me, uh, I think my first first experiences with with sci fi that I remember, I would have been five, six, seven in that that age range, uh, watching uh, let's see, Spaceballs and classic Star Trek: The Next Generation when it was actually originally airing, then. A little bit older, it was uh, Next Generation was had gone into syndication, and I was watching it every day after school, and then I would change over to PBS, and I would watch uh, Jordy on Reading Rainbow. Aww. And then... <laughs> the more you know. A little Ding-ding. bit later, uh, Stargate got into that. Oh, uh, yeah. But every sci-fi I could get a hold of, I loved. Absolutely loved it. And... Yeah, like, okay, Stargate, that's one where if we, we we would have to really narrow it down to be able to cover it on the show because basically either just the movie, just the T V series. What which one? Exactly. Yeah. So that's why some of these episodes may be an hour long and cover an entire universe, while some of these might be a half hour long covering a single movie. Yeah. And we'll try to balance that out. All right. And we are at a- Almost 20 minutes now, and right. I think we've actually covered it. Okay. So for those of you getting this on the Atheist Nomads feed, um, in a bit over a month, expect something on either Terminator or Aliens. And for those of you who are getting this off of its own feed, uh, you'll be able to see uh, or listen to uh, the next episode, our first actual episode in, you know, tomorrow. Shortly. Yeah, I'm or not, even I'm today. I'm not going to put a guarantee on that, but shortly. Yes. Um, if you're friends and family, thanks for supporting us. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sorry that I haven't been supporting you and your stuff. Um, ADD, that's what I'll blame it on. <laughs> yes, and uh, we will have some, some artwork and, and theme music and the like by the time we actually do the first episode, or at least before it gets released. Uh, but for this one... Uh, there's probably none of that unless I add it in later due to the magic of post-production. Yay. All right. Thanks for joining us for our first episode zero, Geeky Nomads. Bye.